and welcome to the beautiful village of Dalham. And this is where we're starting today's walk. Let me introduce you firstly to my co-star. This is Oscar and the man behind the lens is Chris. And uh, this is actually Chris's dog. And the three of us are going to explore today the three churches walk involving Moulton and Gaisley and ending up back here in Dalham, hopefully at the pub. So let's go. Come on, Oscar. Dalham really is picture postcard stuff with its pretty cottages, three quarters of which are thatched. That's more than anywhere else in Suffolk. It's not long before we turn into the countryside and onto the Ignield Way path. The Ignealed Way is thought to be the oldest road in Britain, dating back to the first century. Its ancient pathways have led millennia of tradesmen and travellers all the way from Dorset to North Norfolk. We have riverside parts, we have walks through the woods and the history in, in the local area. The Phil is part of a group of volunteers who help preserve the path. He says the exact route would have changed with the years and the seasons, but there is a sense of tangible history along this ancient route. It's a real timeless is about following paths like this. My own forebears were all agricultural labourers, and they almost certainly used paths just like these to get to and from their places of employment. And looking round, you know, you just think to yourself, was it much different? You can actually imagine seeing a horse and cart coming round the corner. It's not long before we reach our next village, Moulton, famed for its beautiful church, its ford, this is Oscar. and 15th century Pack Horse Bridge. What a wonderful bridge, isn't Beautiful it? Fantastic. Yes, the Flint good. Bridge was on a major route Deep between Bury and Cambridge. Deep Up to the 18th century, pack horse trains were the main long distance transport. As many as 50 animals at a time would cross here laden with all sorts of goods. They would have been carrying things of quite value in those days. It would be wool and grain. Um, they would have come down from Gaisley and gone over the bridge and most probably all gathered together on the green and had a rest before they carried on to Cambridge and Newmarket. The sides of the bridge are surprisingly steep, but offer nice views across the now much smaller river. Thank you very much for that. Enjoy your walk. Bye-bye. We push on up the hill, enjoying the views and meeting a friend or two along the way. We arrive in Gaisley in the graveyard of the beautiful 13th century church. Exploring this village is like walking through a history book. Very little has changed. On through the woods and eventually we reach the final of the three churches at the top of the hill above Dalham, alongside the Grand Hall. Nearing the end of our walk on re-entering Dalham, Oscar and I come upon this unusual conical-shaped building. It's an old malting kiln dating back to at least 1820, one of just two left in the county. And it's at the bottom of Margaret and Peter's garden. You would have seen trestles on which the hops would have been laid out and then you would have had the kiln underneath so to warm it and so to dry them all out. And the story goes that this extraordinary building produced some extraordinary ale. In the 1880s, there was an article in the Times which said that Dalham was the most rowdy, drunken, tough, irascible village in the whole of England. And this is all down to the ale. And in fact, they were so pugilistic that the vicar of the time taught all the schoolboys how to box so they were able to defend themselves from their fathers. It seems only fitting, therefore, that we should end our walk back at the once notorious pub, still called the Affleck Arms, but nowadays a rather idyllic setting and without the boxing and rowdy behaviour. And so our adventure ends here, as all good dog walks should, with a cool drink, surrounded by good conversation. Tanya Mercer and Oscar for ITV News in Suffolk.